Joe is inputting a very important date on his calendar. Joe's here. We're, we're shooting a build. Joe is physically here. But guys, I want to start this video off with a big promotional reminder. We are doing an awesome hardware semi-annual charity live stream event on Saturday, June 26th, starting at about uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time and going for about eight hours after that. We're going to be raising money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals through Extra Life. And one of the things going along with that event is Kyle and I are both giving systems away. I don't know what Kyle is giving away, but I am starting the system giveaway that I'm going to be giving away today. It's water cooled. It's going to be pretty epic. And this is going to take a few videos. So today we're going to get this thing put together, get some measurements, get some initial ideas of how it's going to look, and then we'll get some feedback from you guys on uh, any tweaks, changes, adjustments we might need to make to it. I'm really excited because we just get to build today. So let's get started. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. So I'm going to start off by going over the parts and I have a few sponsored parts that were provided by uh, different companies we work with. And uh, since this is going to be a water cooled build, this is probably the biggest component that uh, I haven't shown you guys. I don't even have space for it on the table. I did an unboxing of this probably seven months ago. It's a crazy kit from EK that's meant to water cool AMD components. So both AMD Ryzen processors and AMD Radeon GPUs. So we're going to be using most of the gear from that kit and then a few other companies have uh, provided some parts for this build slash giveaway slash promotion for our charity event. Lian Lee, of course, has provided the 011 Dynamic Mini case that we're going to be building in. This is the white version of the case. And also all of these uni fans, the fans that just snap together, making RGB setup a lot easier, which I'm definitely happy about since we're, uh, we've got a lot going on in this build. Our friends over at AMD and the Radeon team sent this graphics card over. You might have heard of it before. It's the Radeon RX 6. 800 XT. Absolutely beastly graphics card and I'm going to be removing the very nice air cooler that uh, AMD designed for it and slapping on a water block. Since we're going for a mix of aesthetics and functionality here, we went with the N7B550 motherboard from our friends at NZXT who also sent this over for this project and this build and to support our charity event. This board has a really nice looking uh, white sort of sheathing across the entire thing that gives it a nice clean finished look that I think is going to blend in beautifully with our overall color scheme which is going to be white, black, and then uh, red and silver. And our memory kit should also look really nice with that color scheme. This is from Gal or Giel, however you want to pronounce that. And this is their Orion kit. And this is a crazy kit of DDR4. Look at the capacity. That is a 64 gig kit. These are 32 gigs per stick. So even though this is a relatively small build, it's getting a lot of memory installed. And it's even DDR4 4000 cast latency 182424. And look, with four DIMM slots, the winner could potentially even expand it to like 128 gigs in the system if they wanted to, which uh, would be a decent pairing with our processor, which is the Ryzen 7 5800X. This one is sponsored by me. I, I bought this CPU to put in this build and to give away. So uh, there it is. And that is the 5000 series, eight core, 16 thread, seven nanometer Zen 3 design, which is a really, really good, one of the best processors you can get for gaming. Also provided by me, although I do have friends at Corsair and I could have asked them, but uh, I just went and bought this as well. The SF750 power supply, since uh, the case does support many ITX power supplies, you need a smaller one to go in there. This is a really good one with plenty of power available. It's also fully modular. It comes with a nice set of sleeved cables, but actually one of our goals today is to get everything set up in here so we can measure to have custom cables made, which are going to be provided by Joey from Insource. So there's a quick rundown of the parts we're building with today, the core components, and I know we're probably still missing a few things here and there, storage perhaps, uh, but we'll, we'll figure that stuff out as we move along. For now, I'm itching to get this thing put together, so let's go. So if you ever have the opportunity to build a water-cooled system, there is one key step in the process that you should not skip. I sometimes skip this process when I'm doing a more normal air-cooled build, 
but you should never skip this when you're water cooling. That's an outside of the box build, just to make sure your hardware is functioning properly. By the way, as I've been assembling this, I've noted that this NZXT N7 B550 motherboard has a nice set of features. They OEM through ASRock for this board, but it has integrated Wi-Fi, exterior clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons, surface mounted power and reset, as well as that USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. And it's a nice looking board too. So uh, great job NZXT and ASRock on this one. And I'm gonna use the surface mounted power button right now after I switch the power supply on, of course, hopefully turn the system on. Oh, I turned the power supply off. Ooh, VGN. Oh, hey, 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 we got a splash screen. Well, that's pretty quick. Outside of the box build is functional. Got into the uh, UEFI here and uh, we're on version 1.1. I do believe there's an update available, but the main point is everything's functional and we can see the memory and all that good stuff. So I think we're okay to move on with the build. So now it's time to get into this case and kind of figure out what we're working with. Again, this is the 011 Dynamic Mini from Liam Lee. This is the white version of it. And by removing this top panel here, you can pretty easily lift off the front and side tempered glass pieces. Now this is kind of a big case for a mini case, uh, but it does support actually both mini ITX, well, mini ITX, micro ATX, and full size ATX motherboards. And that's how we're gonna be able to fit the N7B550 in here, which is a full size ATX motherboard. It comes with a bunch of accessories, metal brackets and pieces that can be used to sort of shift it into the different configurations. For example, this little extension right here we're going to be mounting right there and that gives you all the mounting points even over here on the right side for a full-size ATX motherboard. There are also several different pump mounts brackets that come installed whether you want to mount it you know vertically to one of the 120 or 140 fan mounts there or, or down here on the bottom of the case like that's what uh, that's what that one is for. And then I found these and I was like wait what are these for? But if we go around here to the back of the case we can see this rear bracket here which includes the fan mount the IO panel, and then these top three expansion brackets. The lower pieces here are separate, so you got two more here and two more here. Right now it's an ATX mode that gives you seven expansion slots, but you can take this upper bracket, which splits right here, and you can just shift it down by removing, say like these middle uh, two PCIe expansion brackets, and then it would be in uh, micro ATX mode, and that would give you more clearance towards the top of the case, then you can use this top piece right here to pop that in and fill in the gap. Likewise, if you just wanted to go ITX, you could remove all four of these expansion slots and then there's a couple different mounting places where you can put the mini ITX version. But like I said, we're going full size ATX, so, so we don't need to worry too much about these back brackets or uh, these slot covers. Our next step is going to be to pop in this little expansion bracket there so we can mount our full size ATX motherboard and get a better idea of how much space we have. Where are we gonna put the radiators? That's the big question. I'm probably gonna go with two radiators I believe there's only one that comes in the kit, so I probably need to get a second one. We have three mounting points across here at the bottom where you can fit a, uh, I believe up to 360 rad, but we have three potential locations down here across the bottom, vertically there and sort of the side intake or exhaust, however you set that up, and then across the top. So now the core components are installed in the case, I need to get the water cooling stuff out so I can start uh, lining them up, getting some measurements. Kinda wish there was a puff of smoke or fog or... I can add it. <laughs> It's kind of crazy to me that this kit from EK arrived so long ago and I've been planning to do a build with it for so long. And now that I'm doing a build that I'm intending to give away, I'm looking at all these parts and I'm being like, I don't want to give this away. This is really nice stuff. But no, I'm still going to give it away because that's what I promised people. And I'm actually really happy that this stuff is going to be going to a good home. Now, a couple things about the water cooling aspect in general. One is that I'm going to be shipping this system eventually. So, so I'm sticking with the all black flexible tubing that EK shipped along with this kit. I think that tubing looks really nice. It's going to match with the sort of black, white, silver, red color scheme that we have going on. And flexible tubing is a little bit safer to ship 
than hardline tubing, and it's also a little bit easier to work with if maintenance is ever required. The second thing is, even though EK shipped some uh, coolants along with this, including some red coolant that's supposed to go with the AMD theme, I'm just gonna stick with water, probably with a biocide additive, and that will give the winner the option, if they want to, to go with a colored fluid if they do want. If I were to add red uh, coolant to this right off the bat, if you ever removed that, it's going to stain things. That's just how the red coolants typically works. Beyond that though, our core components are the block of, of course, which has the nice Radeon logo on it, and that will light up. Uh, these Quite a few of these components have uh, little leads here to plug into uh, RGB headers. This also comes with a full back plate with the AMD Radeon logo on it. So that I think is also gonna look really nice, just kind of a, a showpiece there in the center of the rig. A nice clean looking silver back plate finish. There's of course an argument to be made for doing like a vertical mount with this right here. So the Radeon logo would be showing. However, I don't have the vertical mount kit for this case for one and for two, we're dealing with pretty limited space. It turns out once you start filling things out here with radiators, and everything. So EK does with that kit include one of their uh, Coolstream, I believe, yeah, their Coolstream PE uh, radiators, which is kind of their standard size 360 red. So you can see if I drop the radiator down into the bottom here, it's taken up a decent amount of space. This is another reason why pre-planning for water cooling builds is really important because once this is installed, especially once fans are on top of it, you're not gonna have much access to the front panel connectors and other plugs down here on the bottom that you want to plug in. So you, we're gonna wanna make sure to have all that stuff wired up before we actually start installing all of the water cooling gear. We have another potential mounting location for a 360 rad here in the top. But again, we're working with pretty limited space since we went with a full-size ATX motherboard in this build. So a 360 rad is not going to fit in the top right now. And that's simply because the cover here for the IO bracket is sticking out enough that it conflicts with that there at the end. So I could potentially do a shorter radiator here, or I could just go with fans in the top for exhaust and stick with rads on the bottom and the side intake. One nice thing about this GPU and the block we're using is that it's not very long. So you can see that that'll be kind of where the block sits on the bottom side of the GPU when it's installed. It doesn't extend too far out here. And that's gonna be important because I think this is gonna be where we want our uh, reservoir and pump combo unit to go. I think it would look really nice kind of sitting somewhere like this. However, this has a D5 pump on the back of it. This is again, like a pump reservoir combo unit here. And that protrudes quite a bit. It has a bracket so you can still install it on top of a standard 120 millimeter fan mount. But if back here I have a radiator and probably more likely a radiator with fan on top of it, then this might need to sit out pretty far here. And then we might potentially come into conflict with the graphics card. So we skipped ahead a little bit here because I was doing a bunch of random configuration, trying to figure out where the heck everything is gonna fit. Since we have this thicker 360 millimeter radiator and it's conflicting in the top with the motherboard, this is the only place it's gonna go. So that's where it's gonna go. I also took the uh, fans and again, nice thing about these Lian Li Uni fans, being able to snap them together. If you're trying to configure something like this and get measurements, you can snap three of them together and then you can just sort of set them where they need to go in order to figure out where they're gonna go, how it's gonna look and uh, it works out well. Likewise in the top, if we we're trying to do a radiator and fans, uh, I think we we're gonna run into conflicts with the memory here as well as the top of the cooling solution for the uh, power delivery on the motherboard. So we're going with the only configuration that I think works right here, which is just fans for exhaust in the top. And again, snap those together and actually mounted them just briefly for a test fitting so we can again, make sure that we're getting clearance on everything. This is my configuration that I think is gonna work for the other radiators. So this is another EK rad. It's, it's a used one, which is why it's dusty, but we're just using it for test fitting here. This is one of their slim edition ones. So it's a little bit slimmer than the full size PE. This is the SE. And as you can see, I've mounted the reservoir pump unit on top of that, because that's how it's supposed to mount. It comes with a bracket back there and it mounts to 120 millimeter fan mount. I also realized with this configuration, like we could have mounted this on top of a fan and had like the radiator and then the fan and then the uh, pump and reservoir unit. However, that would stick out a lot. So I decided it's probably best just to mount this right here in the lower position. And then also we're gonna do some pull fans in the back that are actually going to mount to the other side of that bracket because there's enough space to do that with 120 millimeter fans on the back and then I was like why not do half push pull on this to use up another one of our Lian Li Uni fans give it a little bit more lighting and also just to fill it out a little bit more so we don't have bare radiator staring out at us because that's always a faux pas with water cool builds of course the big question with this is will will it fit it's part of our goal today seeing if things will fit and I am now for the first time trying to align this into the case maybe maybe it will actually fit 
so there it is uh, with our 240 rad mounted with the pump reservoir on top of it. This provides a bit of clearance down here so we can still pass through our tubing where needed. Uh, EK provided along with these fittings, which actually are, are really nice fittings and have a nice red accent, which also goes very well with the color scheme. They provided these really beefy 90 degree angled connectors. So probably be able to pop one of these in like right up here-ish. So I'll definitely be using some angled fittings and connectors to make sure that all my runs can go where I want them to without too much difficulty. And then uh, like, I, like I already showed, these fans will be mounted on top of that to provide our intake. And there goes all my clearance. <laughs> That's fine though. So here I'm just holding the graphics card so you can kind of get an idea of where that's gonna sit. And again, a uh, really nice clearance there. I'm glad that we're not going with like an aftermarket card that's super long because we definitely would not be able to fit it. But this will even be thinner uh, once we install the block on it rather than having the full air-cooled solution that is installed right now. Here's another look from the front. Of course, this uh, case has just a tempered glass piece across the front, so you get a really good look at what's inside, but I also wanted to make sure that from this angle, uh, stuff wasn't gonna look awkward or anything. And the side of this doesn't look the greatest, but it also doesn't stand out, and I think once the fans are lit up and spinning and everything, the eye is going to be much more drawn to the uh, actual reservoir and to the other stuff that are lit up and looking pretty in the case. So, I am pretty happy with this configuration, and I think we can plan on it as we move forward with part two of this build. And that's gonna be the water cooling setup and installation. So setting up the GPU block, installing the CPU block, uh, getting the fittings. I realized I don't think I have quite enough of these fittings, but since Kyle got the same kit and he didn't use these uh, barb fittings for the flexible tubing. So he said he has a few that he can spare and send my way. So that will be really nice to make sure that those all match. Here's a look at the cable management area where we still, at least for now, have plenty of space to work with. And the back side of that 240 rad, so I'm gonna put a couple fans here. Those are gonna be set up in a pull configuration, pulling air through the radiator, and then uh, fortunately on this side of the case, the side panel, there's of course ventilation and they even include a dust filter for that, so that's appreciated. I think it's actually funny because the only thing I didn't manage to fit in with the configuration we've gone with is these 140 millimeter uni fans from Lian Lee. These fans have been really popular since they launched and have been in short supply somewhat. Now, the 140s in particular, I haven't seen anywhere. So I guess I will still need to find a good home for those. But for now, final step for today is going to be to get some measurements for our custom sleeved cables that are going to be provided by Insourced Customs. So I've learned a lot today. I have some very important notes, some things to follow up on. Uh, I need to order a 240 millimeter radiator to put back there. Uh, I need to figure out storage for this build. We realized as we were going through the initial parts, like, ah, don't have SSDs lined up. So that will be figured out by the time I do part two of this video next week. But I feel like we've made a ton of progress just being able to fit all the hardware in here where it needs to go and making sure that there's space for things. And I think there might even be enough room for me to run the tubing once we get to that point, which again will be in the part two part of this video. I'd love to hear your feedback on how this is all coming together though, what you guys think of my decisions that have been made so far and still important decisions yet to come. Like I need to send Joey over the measurements for this to make the custom cables. And I haven't quite decided on a color scheme for that. So if you guys in the comments could let me know what color scheme you're kind of feeling, or especially if you've seen custom sleeved cables that have a design that you really like, or if you feel like the color scheme could be tweaked or applied to this. Put, post those down in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter at Paul Hardware and uh, send me pictures because that is the thing that I need to finally decide on this. And I feel like the red accents are the thing that are kind of lacking in this build so far. They look really nice with the memory that's right there. And you can see the red accent on this graphics card, but that's gonna be going away. So I feel like the red accent is gonna need to pop in the choice of uh, custom sleeve cables. But that is gonna wrap it up for this part one video on this uh, pretty epic water-cooled system, I think, that's coming together that again, is going to be given away. It's not being given away yet, but the uh, details for the giveaway will go up closer to our charity live stream event that this is being given away to help promote. Again, that is on Saturday, June 26th, and we'll be kicking things off at about 10 a.m. Pacific time. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Links to the parts I used and stuff will be down in the video's description. While you're down there, if you wanna check out my store at paulshardware.net, you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and the beer sets, which I, I do believe my pint glasses are finally back in stock. It's been a while, but uh, those are in high demand. And hey, do all the other things that you might do at the end of a video, like hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you really enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in the next video.